Why do we do what we do or act the way we act? Let's start with an example. Say you want to buy a new smartphone. What exactly influences this decision? You may start reading about available phones out there and form an opinion about which one is best for you. You may talk to friends and see what they think about the phones currently on the market. You may go to a store and test a few or get some advice from a sales guy. You may even do all of this and with everything that's available to you at some stage you make a decision and buy one. A good theory that explains and predicts how such behaviors form is called the theory of planned behavior. It's built out of a number of constructs. The first one is the attitude towards the act or behavior. That's an individual's belief if a certain behavior or act makes a positive or negative contribution to that person's life. In the smartphone example it means that you either believe that buying a certain phone makes sense for you or not, or which phone makes the most sense for you. A second construct is called subjective norm. This construct focuses on everything around the individual. In other words, his or her social network, cultural norms, group beliefs and so on. Back to the smartphone example. You will already have an opinion or form a belief as to what others think about you having that phone or not having it. And that belief again influences your decision. A third construct is called perceived behavioral control. And what this construct actually expresses is a person's belief on how easy or hard it is to display a certain behavior or act in a certain way. Again, in the smartphone case, you might pick up a few of them in a store and form an opinion on how easy or hard it is for you to handle each one. What the theory now actually predicts is that a positive attitude towards the act or behavior, favorable social norms and a high level of perceived behavioral control are the best predictors for forming a behavioral intention and in turn lead to a displayed behavior or act. In other words, it predicts that if you think a certain smartphone is a good idea, and you believe everyone else thinks it's a good idea, and you believe you can actually handle it, you'll get that phone. If one of those constructs is unfavorable, so if you think it doesn't make much sense for you to get a particular phone, or you think others don't think it's a good idea, or you're going to be right out of your comfort zone handling it, you're much less likely to get that particular phone. And the likelihood decreases if two or even three out of these constructs are unfavorable. Plant behavior is up to today one of the best predictors and theories used in marketing. If we look into the tech world, we're seeing examples everywhere. Information is abundant for us to form our opinions. And infomercials are everywhere. We see ratings, reviews and discussions about every product and service out there and we're being told that people who buy what we are about to buy are also buying this other thing. And finally, we're prompted everywhere to test almost every web platform or service out there before we subscribe to see if we can actually handle it and also if it makes sense for us. All of this in combination contributes to us making a decision and modern marketing needs to master all these avenues to successfully place a service or product to digital natives spending their time on the internet.